Um, police prevent crime, and they did prevent crime in New York City. New York City was one of the most dangerous, murderous cities in the 1980s and early 1990s, and someone who I think is unnecessarily mocked and smeared, Rudy Giuliani became mayor and cleaned up that entire city. Charlie causes a liberal meltdown. Guys, this is going to be amazing, I think, because the title is actually interesting. But guys, if you're new yet, then you should like, share, subscribe to my channel. Guys, let's get straight into this. Uh, hey, Charlie, thanks for coming. Uh, I want to ask some que a question about uh, racism. I okay. know you've argued that systemic racism in the U.S. doesn't exist. I right. wanted to point out some answers I think that's obviously wrong okay. and see how what you think about it. So just starting with the issue of crime, we know for a fact, because it's, it's been studied pretty extensively, black people and people who aren't black or white people use drugs, commit nonviolent drug offenses at pretty much the same rates. Um, black people get arrested for these crimes about, three, I think, two to three times more often. It's dropping now that we've like legalized weed more in more and more states, which is a great, a great thing that we've done. Even if you say that like police are doing that like not on purpose, but because they're just in areas where more violent crime is committed and they're That's patrolling, yeah. isn't that an obvious example of like something that black people have to deal with in this country that's much worse off for them than non-black people? Okay, uh, no, but uh, any other point you want to make about systemic racism? So let me ask you a question. You believe there's systemic racism? Um, just like some, I would say that there's a lot of shit that black people have to deal with that makes them worse off in the country. Okay, uh, such as like having to be around police all the time? Yeah, because if okay. you're around police, not because police, but because of, we have like this, I think, like shitty law that you have to, that you're going to get arrested for committing a nonviolent drug crime. So as an extension of that, you're around police more often. You're more likely to be arrested for that crime. So look, here's the thing. So in 2018, blacks made up 53% of all the homicide offenders in America. No one wants to say it out loud, but blacks commit more crimes than whites and Asians and Hispanics. In fact, there's a disproportionate amount of crime committed by blacks in America. And so therefore, you're going to have a heavier police presence. And so why is that happening? I believe there's a fatherless ep epidemic happening in America. And I really don't have a soft spot for the argument like, hey, there's too many police around, therefore I can't like deal crack without being interrupted. Like not exactly very compelling to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Now secondly, let me say this though, is that there are issues, if you want to just talk strictly racial, that are disproportionately affecting white America such as opioids and fentanyl. I have to say that blacks are not affected by this, but it is a disproportionate rural issue. Now, why would that be? Well, white individuals, because of the industrial kind of growth in America, were more likely to get involved in muscular trades in Ohio and Pennsylvania, especially in steel mill towns and such. Therefore, they'd be more what? Likely to get injured at work. So you get likely to get injured at work because of the Sackler family, which you and I could probably agree are a bunch of criminals who should be put in prison for a long period of time. They started to overprescribe oxycotton, oxycotton, I'm sorry, um, into the communities and therefore getting these people addicted to the high of an opioid and then searching for other places to go there. So we could play these kind of racial games all the time. Is it fair for someone in Southeast Ohio who's white, who you know, was a son of a steel mill worker, you know, and all these things, that they might have been more exposed to this sort of thing? I think the, the hyper-racialization of all that is less important than the real, more fundamental question, which is why does race matter in any of this? And I say it doesn't. I don't like looking at people through a racial lens. If you want to do that, which I said, the statistics are not good at all. In fact, it shows that there's an under-policing problem in black neighborhoods across America. In fact, 50% of homicides go unsolved in Chicago, 50% because of lack of detectives and lack of police in a lot of these areas. And kind of for your you know, daily thought crime, um, police prevent crime, and they did prevent crime in New York City. New York City was one of the most dangerous, murderous cities in the 1980s and early 1990s, and someone who I think is unnecessarily mocked and smeared, Rudy Giuliani became mayor and cleaned up that entire city. And to his credit, liberal Democrat who ran for president, Mike Bloomberg, continued those policies. And so, look, um, any thoughts on that really quick? Because I want to get some other questions. But um, Yeah, I think I, d I wasn't disagreeing at all that police do a lot of great work. The okay. only problem with that is that it is a true fact that a ballot, ex that a factual extension of the fact that police are in certain areas more often means that if society has shitty laws, those shitty laws are going to be enforced more often. I think most well, okay, people but I, I don't think agree. I don't like think the law crack. against, oh, I'm, okay, sorry to interrupt, but I don't think a law against dealing crack is a bad law. Okay, but what about weed? W what about weed? I think the same applies for weed. You're much more likely to get arrested, and even if this isn't happening as much now, it happened much more often in the past. You're much more likely to get arrested. So there's been, there's been plenty of studies done by Harvard and 
Maryland showing there was actually an under-policing problem in a lot of these communities. You, can, you and I could do statistics all day long because I'm sure that there's plenty that you could cite. But first of all, I'm not a fan of legalizing marijuana. I think it's a really bad idea. Um, but I, I can probably agree with you that there is a problem with locking people in prison for an extended period of time for using marijuana. But there's another funda more fundamental question, which is this, which is you can get into sentencing, right, which is usually kind of a talking point, which is that the most important thing when it comes to you know, your likelihood of going to jail if you commit a crime is less about your skin color and more about your wealth and how, how competent of a counsel you can hire, right? And so, for example, LeBron James, if Bronny you know, gets caught dealing crack, which I don't think he will, he's going to have the best lawyer on the planet representing him. <laughs> yeah. He'll be filing motions for dismissal, cross-examination of evidence, you know, all sorts of different things. So it's less about race, isn't it? I mean, if Denzel Washington kids or Oprah's God's ki God kids did that, it's more about really a wealth problem, right? So then you'd say, well, it's because of racism. Well, no, it's not. Blaming wealth inequality between races, which I don't like doing, but if you want to play that game, strictly on racism is a sloppy way to look at things. So the, the perspective we have is a perspective of Thomas Hole, Thomas, Thomas Sowell, which is you look at the whole body of work, you'll see that just because you have disparate outcomes does not mean, mean you could solely blame discrimination. And I'll prove it to you with one data point and then we'll move on, which is this, which is that you can have different data points that have outcomes and there's other factors that play in. So for example, San Francisco and New York are far wealthier than Missoula, Montana and Birmingham, Alabama. Why? Someone would say, racism. Well, no, it's not. Mountain towns and inland cities are just less likely to be around commerce and trade. And port cities, by definition, are always wealthier. Yeah. That has nothing to do with race and everything to do with geography. So what does that example have to do? Sometimes you can have disparate outcomes with data, and attributing racism to it is actually not just imprudent, it's really, really detrimental and harmful. So one thing that I would agree with that we need to do, put fathers back into the home, uh, which is very, very important. In 1965, <laughs> marriage rates in the black community were about 80%. Now it's plummeted down to 20 to 25%. There's a lot of reasons for this, subsidizing single motherhood through the Great Society and many other things. But there's other factors that play in. How many words is a child hearing at home? Is the child getting read to on a daily or weekly basis by parents? Those things transcend race. And in fact, the hyperfixation on kind of systemic racism, I think kind of creates a smoke screen that disallows us from actually finding meaningful solution to these problems. So thank you, we gotta get to the next question. Appreciate it, thank you. Guys, what do you think about this? Like, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And why do you think people are no longer getting married? Or why do you think people divorce a lot? Like you see someone having five, six husbands. I'm watching Game of Thrones recently. And yes, the woman said, I didn't love my father when I got married to him, but like, we we knew like we started loving ourselves like as the time goes on and it was something i read recently where i think the bible said it that don't fall in love walk in love like i believe when you love your partner you like you don't really have to love your partner to actually honor and respect the person but when you look at kings like let me use game of thrones for example like I'm coming. I'm I'm getting to it. Like when you look at kings, you don't really have to love the king. You you respect the throne. And the thing there is that you respect the fact that this is your spouse, your marriage. Yeah, you're, you're in a marriage. So this is more like a bond. You have to respect your partner in everything you do. Back to this. I believe if black this was the way black people think, I don't know how it changed, but like I feel it's changing due to time and due to the fact that our culture is not really being taught like that to us anymore. And let's say the older people were saying, like the older generation that were saying, most of them, most of the women, child is not for their husband, like they're bringing in different men children for the husband to drink and it's actually heartbreaking. When you're a man, you see that, no, my friend wife that I thought was perfect gave him another child. No, I, I don't want to be a father. Like, no, I don't want to be a father. I don't want to have a wife because it's better for me to know this is my baby and I'm far from you than for me to think this is my child and you're bringing different people's child for me. Let's go back to this. I honestly believe that legalizing weed, it's... I really don't see the benefit of weed. This is because I have not searched for it. And I wrote after this video, but I don't see the benefit of it. I, I don't see the reason why I want to feel high. Like, it does not make sense. Like, I believe... I, I need to be productive in my life. There was a day my friend gave me, 
I think it's a toughie and I was high as fuck. See, it it was not fun. I wasn't high, but I was really dizzy and sleepy. So I wasted a whole day. I did not post, I did not do anything in my life. I was pissed the next day. I wonder, I'm like, this is the last time this is ever going to happen. Like, I, I really don't understand how people are comfortable doing those screens and being productive because it won't work for me. Like, I have to make videos every, almost every single day and me being high is not going to work for me. Like, it does not make sense. Like, if you look at America now, you see some grown-ass people on the street lying down, like, trying to walk and they're just sleeping on the floor. Like, it's heartbreaking. And I honestly believe that police should do the job very well to clean the job the drug market, but I don't think it will ever be possible because when you're removing the bus, on that person's taking over. But like I honestly believe that there's on that police in America and I believe police are doing their job. If you watch the movie Vuki, you can see that police are really doing their job, like they're trying their best. But guys, don't want to think about this. Just like, just cut my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Best.